My name is Marissa, and I am from Barcelona. I am 50 years old and, yes, I have desires, like anyone. I live in a cozy apartment in Barcelona with my husband, Carlos. We both work hard to keep our lives comfortable and stable. Our routine was simple but comforting. In the mornings, Carlos and I would kiss goodbye before going to our respective jobs. He is a lawyer and I work in a clothing store. In the evenings, we shared our experiences of the day, ate dinner together, and relaxed in front of the television. However, everything started to change when our house needed some repairs. We decided to call a bricklayer to fix the problems we had been putting off for months. The bricklayer's name was Marcos, a young, attractive man who radiated confidence and self-assurance. From the moment he arrived at our house, I noticed how his eyes looked at me penetratingly. I couldn't help but feel a little nervous under his intense gaze. While he worked around the house, Marcos and I exchanged casual conversations. I discovered that we lived close and shared a similar sense of humor. As the days went by, I began to notice that I felt watched whenever he was around. Carlos was busy with his work, so he spent most of his time at home while Marcos did the repairs. Sometimes, I found myself finding excuses to stay in the same room as him just so I could feel his close presence. I couldn't help but have certain thoughts when looking at Marcos. It was as if something had been ignited inside me, awakening emotions and flirtations that I had forgotten existed. Even though I tried to resist, it was hard to ignore the tension between us. Desire was taking over me, and I knew I had to make a decision before it was too late. Before Marcos finishes repairing him. So, here I am, telling you how it all started. To be honest, I never thought I would be in this situation again. But as they say, the past always comes back to haunt us, right? Let me back up a bit and put you in context. You see, before all this happened, I had had a couple of slip-ups. Yes, I admit it. I cheated on my husband twice in the past. But that was a long time ago, at a time in my life where adventure and excitement seemed to be all I needed. And the best, or worst, thing of all is that my husband never found out. So why return to this dangerous territory? I guess you never know when those thoughts are going to wake up again. Now, let me tell you something about my husband and me. We lived in a cozy apartment in Barcelona. We both worked hard to maintain our lives, our comforts. He is a wonderful man, I'm serious. He supports me in everything I do, he loves me unconditionally. But sometimes, even with all that, you can feel like something is missing. And that's exactly what happened. It was when we decided to do some repairs on our house that it all started. It wasn't anything major, just some minor fixes here and there. So we called a bricklayer to come take a look and give us a quote. And that's when I saw him for the first time. I must admit that I never thought a bricklayer could be so interesting. But something about him caught my attention from the beginning. Maybe it was his confidence, the carefree way he moved around our house as if it were his own. Or maybe it was his smile, that smile that seemed to hide secrets and promises of exciting adventures. In any case, I noticed that he looked at it differently. I can't explain it exactly but something was in the air every time we were around. A kind of electric tension that left me breathless and made me want more. 
How could I resist an adventure like that? Of course, it didn't take long for thoughts of guilt and internal conflict to appear. What was he doing? How could I even consider the idea of betraying my husband's trust again? But at the same time, there was something exciting about the danger, the forbidden. It was like I was living in an exciting novel, and I was the main protagonist. So, here I am, at this turning point. With my heart divided between duty and desire, between what is right and what makes me feel alive. What path will I take? Well, that's something that only time will tell. But for now, I can tell you one thing with certainty. This is just the beginning of a story that promises to be much more complicated than I ever imagined. Let me back up a little and tell you how it all started. My husband and I lived in our cozy apartment in Barcelona, but there was one problem that we always avoided, things to repair. You know, those little breakdowns that seem insignificant at first, but over time become an endless to-do list. So one day, after tripping over that same loose tile for the umpteenth time, we decided it was time to face the problem head on. The time had come to look for quotes and begin the arrangements once and for all. I remember we spent hours searching online and asking friends and neighbors for recommendations. Then, after evaluating several options, we found one that seemed to be perfect. The price was reasonable and best of all, I could get started right away. He lived nearby, so there would be no delays or excuses. When we called the builder to discuss the details, I was surprised at how easy it was to organize everything. There were no long waits or complications. We just agreed on a date for the work to begin and that was it. Everything was underway. I remember the feeling of relief I felt at the end of the call. We were finally going to do something about it. We were finally going to fix all those things we had been ignoring for so long. And, well, I never imagined that that simple act of finding someone to do some home repairs would change my life the way it did. But, as they say, fate has a funny way of playing its cards. So, on that particular day, my husband was at work but I was lucky enough to have the day off. We had agreed with the bricklayer that he would come to start the repairs, so I was ready to welcome him home. I remember being nervous about how everything would be. We'd never hired someone to do home repairs before, and the thought of having a stranger hanging around our space made me a little anxious. But at the same time, I was excited to do something about it to take control and fix things. When the time came, I heard the doorbell ring and knew it was him. I opened the door and there he was, standing in front of me, a handsome young man who took my breath away for a moment. I couldn't help but notice how good he looked, in his tight t-shirt and worn jeans. There was something in his gaze that made me feel a little uncomfortable but also intrigued. I let him in and we started walking through the house, checking all the things that needed fixing. I felt a little awkward at first, trying to explain what we wanted, but he seemed to understand everything perfectly. And as he spoke, I noticed his eyes lingering on me longer than necessary, as if he were looking for more than just instructions on how to fix a noisy door. That look unleashed something in me, something I hadn't felt in a long time. I don't know if it was the thrill of the unknown or just the fact of feeling wanted again, but there was a spark in the air that I couldn't ignore. However, despite the palpable tension between us, nothing more than that happened that day. It was just the first glimpse of what was to come the beginning of a story that promised to be much more complicated than I ever imagined. That day was like any other. 
After the bricklayer finished his work, I greeted him and he told me that he would return the next day to continue the repairs. So, once again, I would stay at the apartment to be there while he worked, to make sure everything was in order and to not leave him alone in our house. When my husband returned from work that afternoon, I told him how he had been all over the first day with the bricklayer. I told him that he was a very kind and respectful guy, which was true, but deep down, he was hiding something. I didn't mention how he had felt his gaze on me, how his eyes seemed to search for something more than just instructions on how to repair a wall or a faucet. Of course, my husband didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. He was happy that everything was going and that we were doing something about it. But for me, that day had awakened something that had been dormant inside me for a long time. There was something in the air, as if he had become young again. That night, when we went to sleep, I couldn't stop tossing and turning in bed, unable to get the thoughts of adventure with the bricklayer out of my mind. She wasn't sure what to do with those feelings, how to deal with the mix of thoughts and emotions she had. But one thing was certain, there was something about that man that attracted me in a way I hadn't felt in a long, long time. And I had the feeling that this story was far from over. I woke up with a feeling of anticipation fluttering in my stomach. My husband had left early for work as usual, and I got up with the task of receiving the bricklayer. I headed straight to the shower, preparing for the day ahead. This time, I decided to wear comfortable clothes, something light and loose that would make me feel relaxed and ready to face whatever this day might bring. When I heard the doorbell, my heart skipped a little. I opened the door and there he was, with his friendly smile and his tools in his hand. I welcomed him and let him in so he could continue with the repairs. While he worked, we started talking. I found out that he lived very close by, which explained why he was able to come so quickly when we needed him. We talked about our neighborhoods, our routines, and I discovered that, despite the age difference, we had a lot in common. Even though the bricklayer was about 20 years younger than me, I couldn't help but be attracted to him. There was something about his way of being, about his energy, that intrigued me and attracted me like a magnet. I don't know if it was his youth and vitality, or just his carefree way of seeing life, but something about him called me. And as time went on, I realized that I was determined to do more than just watch him from a distance. Every interaction, every shared smile, every innocent joke, fueled the fire inside me. I knew he was playing with fire, that he was jeopardizing everything he had built with my husband, but at the time, those concerns seemed so distant and unimportant. All that mattered was the here and now, the excitement of the moment and the promise of something more. And she was determined to pursue that promise, no matter the consequences. That morning, as the bricklayer continued with his work, I noticed a change in the atmosphere. He started asking me questions about my husband, simple things at first, like what kind of job he had or how long we had been married. But then the questions took on a different tone, as if he were searching for something more, as if he was trying to discover something I didn't want to tell. I felt uncomfortable at first, but then I decided to ignore those feelings. After all, we were having a normal conversation, right? But then, suddenly, everything changed. The bricklayer told me that he was single, that he had not found the right woman yet. And then he said something that took my breath away, he liked older women. That confession was like a punch to the gut, but at the same time, it lit a spark inside me that I couldn't ignore. 
We began exchanging double meaning jokes, nervous laughter that hid something else. I knew they weren't just jokes, but there was something more behind those words. And then, suddenly, he stopped working. Everything became silent, tense. And that's where it all happened, in a moment of madness and passion that I had never experienced before. I can't go into details, but I can tell you that it was a moment that would change everything forever. In the blink of an eye, I was unfaithful to my husband with the bricklayer. And while I was filled with mixed feelings, I knew that he had crossed a line that he should not have crossed. But it was too late for regrets. It was already done, what I had been thinking about so much had happened. After that crazy moment with the bricklayer, I told him not to say anything. My thoughts were in chaos, full of doubts and fear of the consequences it could have. But he just nodded and continued working as if nothing had happened. The next few hours passed like a dream. I tried to get back to normal, to move on as if nothing had happened. But deep down, I knew things would never be the same again. He had crossed a line he shouldn't have crossed, and there was no turning back. When my husband returned home, I tried to act as usual, as if nothing was out of place. I smiled, asked him how his day had been, we continued our routine as if it were just another day. But inside, I was shaking with fear hoping that somehow he would know the truth, that he could see the guilt written all over my face. However, everything passed without incident. My husband didn't suspect anything, he didn't see through my facade of normality. And while that relieved me in some ways, it also filled me with a bit of guilt. Because I knew that what he had done was wrong, Maybe it was just the fear that he would find out what happened. Everything had happened. The repairs on the apartment were complete and the bricklayer was gone, taking our shared secret with him. I was alone in the tranquility of my home, but there was an inner turmoil that I couldn't ignore. It was as if she had gone back in time, as if she were a young woman again, experiencing the excitement of having the first boyfriend. The same thoughts and emotions bubbled up inside me, filling me with a feeling I had long forgotten. That adventure had lit a spark in my life that had been absent for too long. She felt the adrenaline rushing through my veins, making me feel alive in a way I hadn't felt in years. Every thought, every memory of those moments, left me longing for more. And so, after that intense moment full of emotions, it was time to return to my usual life. To my work, my responsibilities, my daily routine. It was as if that brief moment of adventure with the bricklayer had been just that, a fleeting parenthesis in my existence. For me, it had been nothing more than that, an adventure. Something exciting end of the moment, but now relegated to the past, to a hazy memory in my mind. He did not see infidelity as a serious crime, far from it. Sure, I had betrayed my husband, but for me, nothing had changed. I still loved him with the same intensity as before, if not more because who has not ever felt the temptation to deviate from the beaten path? Who had not experienced those moments of doubt, those thoughts that sneaked into the mind? Life was full of moments like that, moments when we faced our own weaknesses and darkest thoughts. I didn't see anything wrong with having those thoughts, with feeling that attraction for someone other than my husband. After all, we are humans, full of desires and passions that were sometimes beyond our control. What matters is how we chose to handle those temptations, how we faced them and overcame them. 
So I decided to move on, leave that brief and exciting chapter in my life behind and focus on what really matters, my marriage, my family, my future. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. And as I continue with my life, I carry with me the memory of that fleeting adventure, like a small spark of excitement in my heart, reminding me that life always had some surprises up its sleeve. First of all, I want to ask that you not judge me for what I did. I know that what I did was a mistake, a betrayal of my husband's trust, but I also know that I am not the only one who has made that mistake. Who has not done this at some time? Who hasn't felt the temptation to stray from the safe path and explore the unknown? I speak from experience, but also from observation. I don't know any person who hasn't felt the attraction of the forbidden at some point in their life. We are people, after all, full of successes and mistakes that can sometimes escape our control. And while that doesn't justify my actions, I hope it at least sheds some reasoning on my situation. I'm not trying to make excuses or minimize the seriousness of what I did. I know I made a mistake and I will have to live with it for the rest of my life. But I also know that I am not perfect, that I am just a human being trying to navigate the complexities of life and love. So I ask you not to judge me too much. I know that I have made a mistake, but I also know that I am capable of being a good person and giving love. And hopefully, by sharing my story, I can help others understand these kinds of behaviors. I want to thank you for listening to me and allowing me to share my story. I know it wasn't easy, but I hope that by doing it, I was able to let off some steam and release some of the weight I was carrying in my heart. So, once again, thank you for listening to me and allowing me to be honest about my experiences.